we're going to be doing some more complicated Hess's Law problems that have multiple steps. We'll have some overall equation that we're trying to build and some step equations that we're going to use to build it. We're going to manipulate those steps if they're not in the correct form. We'll be checking for two things to be true of each of our step equations. First of all, is the desired compound on the same side of the equation in the step equation as it is in the overall equation? If not, we're going to reverse the step equation and change the sign on the associated delta H. The second thing we're checking is does the desired compound have the same coefficient as it does in the overall equation? If it doesn't, then we're going to multiply or divide our equation by some number and do that same multiplication or division to our delta H for that step. Once the coefficients are correct and the compounds are on the correct sides of the equation, the step equations should add correctly up to the overall equation. Then you can add the manipulated delta H values for the steps to get the delta H for the overall reaction. Let's look at an example. We have a reaction that we're trying to build. ClF plus F2 makes ClF3. We also have three steps that we are using to build it. If we were to add the equations together as is right now, they would not add up to the reaction that we're trying to build. So we're going to have to manipulate them. As we do, we're checking for the particular compounds that are in our final equation. We're looking for the ClF and checking to see if it's on the correct side with the correct coefficient. We're checking for the F2 to be on the correct side with the correct coefficient. And we're checking for the ClF3 to be on the correct side with the correct coefficient. If you're given a series of steps, you will use all of them in building your final equation. We're not trying to trick you. If we say these are the steps that you need, they are going to be the steps that you need. This is much easier than it would be for a researcher who has multiple pages full of equations to pick from and no guarantee that any of them can add together to make the desired equation. We can start with the first substance in the desired reaction, the ClF. We find that substance only in step reaction number two. The ClF in reaction number two is on the correct side of the equation. It's on the left, which matches the desired reaction equation. However, it has the wrong coefficient. In our stepwise equation, it has a coefficient of two, but in our overall reaction equation that we're trying to build, it has a coefficient of one. They don't match, which means we're going to have to multiply or divide our equation by some number and do the same thing to our delta H. In this case, since our step equation has a two and we're trying to get it to be a one, we're going to have to divide. We must divide our whole equation by two, not just the CLF, but everything in the equation. All of the coefficients will be divided by two. Two divided by two gives us one for the CLF. One divided by two gives us one half for the O2 molecule. One divided by two gives us one half for the Cl2O and one divided by two gives us one half for the OF2. We do the same division for our delta H. Step equation number two had a delta H of positive 205.6. We divide that by two and that gives us positive 102.8 kilojoules for the manipulated step number two. We've gotten one compound the way that we want it to end up in our overall equation. It's on the correct side and it has the correct coefficient. Therefore, this is very likely to be the form of reaction two that we want to keep. When we add our delta H's in the end, we will use the manipulated value, positive 102.8 kilojoules. The next part of our equation that we want to make sure is correct is the F2. We find F2 only in reaction number one, but it is on the wrong side of the equation and has the wrong coefficient. We want it to be on the left, but it's on the right. And we want it to have a coefficient of one, but it has a coefficient of two. We need to fix both of those things. Let's fix the side of the equation first. We're going to reverse the equation by putting the reactants on the product side and the products on the reactant side. When we do that, we change the sign on delta H from a negative to a positive. 
We've got an F2 on the left side where we want it, but it still has the wrong coefficient. It has a 2, but we want it to be a 1. To fix it, we're going to divide the whole equation by 2. 1 divided by 2 gives us 1 half in front of the O2. 2 divided by 2 gives us 1 in front of the F2. And 2 divided by 2 gives us 1 in front of the OF2. When we divide our equation by 2, we also have to divide our delta H by 2. Positive 49.4 divided by 2 gives us positive 24.7 as the manipulated value for delta H that we will use when we add up our delta H values at the end. We ended up manipulating equation number 1 by reversing it and dividing by 2. And we manipulated our delta H by changing the sign and dividing by 2. Our third piece of the reaction that we're trying to get correct is the ClF3. We can find ClF3 in step reaction 3, but it's on the wrong side of the equation. We want it to be on the right, on our product side, but in our step equation, it's on the left. To fix it, we're going to have to reverse the step equation. The good news is that it has the correct coefficient, so all we have to do is reverse the equation and change the sign on our delta H. When we reverse it, the products go on the reactant side and the reactants go on the product side. We change the sign on delta H from a positive to a negative. This is the form of reaction three that we're going to want to keep, and the manipulated delta H along with it is a negative 266.7. Now that we've gotten our equations the way that we think are probably correct, we're going to add them to double check and make sure that the step equations add up to the overall equation that we're trying to make. Some parts of the step equations are just there because they were part of the reaction that was measured. They end up canceling out, but the three substances that we want to end up with will end up in our final overall equation. Our first equation has one half O2. Our second equation has one half O2. Those are both on the left side, so they add together to make one O2 molecule. That one O2 molecule cancels out with the one oxygen molecule on the right-hand side. OF2 is also going to cancel out. We have a three halves OF2 on the left of our third equation. We have one OF2 in the first equation and one half OF2 in the second equation for a total of three halves OF2 on the right, which cancels out with a three halves OF2 on the left. Finally, the Cl2O ends up canceling out. We have one half on each side of an arrow. The things that didn't cancel out were the ClF, F2, and ClF3, and they have the coefficients that we wanted. We've built our overall equation that we were trying to build. Since we have double checked that we have built our overall equation that we're trying to build with our manipulated equations, now we can take our manipulated delta H's and add them up. We have positive 24.7, and then we add positive 102.8, and then we add negative 266.7, and that gives us an overall delta H for this reaction of negative 139.2 kilojoules. Given the information in the provided table, what is delta H for NO gas plus O gas yields NO2 gas? The reaction NO gas plus O3 gas yields NO2 gas plus O2 gas, has a delta H of negative 198.9. Reaction O3 gas yields 1.5 O2 gas, has a delta H of negative 142.3. The reaction O2 gas yields 2O gas, has a delta H of positive 495.0. Remember, some parts of these equations will just be there to cancel out. Again, make sure you're looking for things to be on the correct sides of the equations and have the correct coefficients. Is the answer A, 190.9 kilojoules, B, 438.4 kilojoules, C, negative 551.6 kilojoules, or D, negative 304.1 kilojoules? The correct answer is D, negative 304.1 kilojoules. The first equation is fine as is. 
it has NO and NO2 in it, and both of those have a coefficient of 1, which is what we want in our final equation that we're trying to build. Additionally, both molecules are on the correct side of the equation, so we're going to leave reaction number 1 alone. Reaction number 2 is just there for canceling stuff out, so we would want to save reaction number 2 for last. Reaction number three has oxygens in it, but is on the incorrect side and has an incorrect coefficient. So we have to reverse the equation and divide by two. For delta H, we would change the sign and divide by two. Going back to the second equation again, it needs to cancel things out in the correct way. Since we have ozone, O3, on our left side in reaction number one, we need ozone on our right side of reaction number two to cancel out. We're going to have to reverse equation number two, and we would change the sign on the delta H. Once we've done all of those manipulations, we can add the reaction equations and add up our delta H's to get the correct answer. I highly recommend the Hess's Law worksheet in Blackboard if you want more practice with these problems.